Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Workshop, where we take a deep dive into the creative process. I am Max Randolph, and here with me today is Theodore Ramirez, or Teddy, as I like to call him. How are we doing, buddy? Doing great. Oh, it's so good to have you on, Parker. And would you please introduce yourself, your tags, all that good stuff? Yeah. Theodore Ramirez. My friends call me Teddy. I do uh, a good amount of film scoring work. A lot of music for you and for your channel. That and you do. Uh, I also love pizza. I love making pizza for people and I love wine. And I just generally love being alive. Well, and I really, I, I don't know, when it comes to creative people, they rarely have a singular passion. It usually sure. spreads into quite a few fields between food and so on and so forth. But yes, you did mention yeah. you make uh, work for me. So when it comes to the YouTube soundtracks, yeah, you actually do all of that music. And it's so beautiful. And I want to talk today about your process when it comes to creating such works. What kind of questions you got for me? <laughs> as animated as always, my friend. Um, <laughs> but yes, I'm so curious because you and I have had so many good conversation, you know, fireside over a glass of wine that oh, you're yeah. talking about. And we like to go deep, right? But this mm -hmm. is a really fun way for us to be able to add chairs to the conversation, bring more people in because there's a lot of other creators out there that might benefit from learning more about the, our process. Tell me about your creative process. Is there any type of ritual, you know, some type of thing that gets you in the mood to create? Oh yeah. I, I feel like I have a handful of things. And if I know that I have ample time, you know, like maybe four to eight hours of the day, maybe even longer, maybe the whole day that gets me inspired because I don't have a lot of pressure at that point. When I have pressure on my schedule or if a lot's on my mind that it is hard to get into a creative space, because for me, I struggle when I'm struggling mentally in any form, if I have other tasks to do, or if there's a family event or something like that, um, it's hard for me to get into the flow, but things that I do to get me into the flow, whether it, those things are happening or not, because sometimes you don't really have a choice. You need to be creative when there's deadlines. Oh, that, that is so spot on. And, and yeah, yeah. It, it is tough, tough to be creative under pressure. And as we do this as professionals, you kind of need to. <laughs> and when you have it, yeah. you're looking down the barrel of a deadline, it's a tough thing to dish out. Yeah. And you just got to do it. Um, some things I like to do, like if I, I, I got to make coffee. I don't mm -hmm. like to eat a lot of food before I start because I get, I get real tired if I eat a big meal. There's lethargy that comes with that. Absolutely. But, <laughs> yeah. but caffeine on the yeah. other hand. <laughs> gets it going. Yeah. That's it gets right. it going really good. Um, and then I, the way I set up my workflow on my computer is huge. So like what I did for your music specifically, before I wrote a note, I created this whole session that had a bunch of my favorite brass instruments, pianos, you know, the whole orchestra, um, different, <clears throat> just a lot of different sounds. And if I want to create some sort of sound on my own, I'll just start experimenting and I'll create an instrument or two. And then what I have is a template that I work with. So I show up, I pull up my Max Randolph template. And so I'm not wasting a bunch of time going through looking for instruments. I already, already spent that time doing it. And That's so then I can just fabulous. sit down and write. Yeah. It's almost like you have, it's almost like when I come into my workshop, I have my materials for that <clears> job <throat> set out and ready to rock. Yeah, exactly. That's Same fascinating. Thing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And, and, and whether or not I write anything good, it, it doesn't matter. I'm still, I still have my space set up, ready to go. And you bring up a really good point. Um, you're there to create, not just to create the perfect piece of music or the perfect piece of art. You're there to experiment. I swear, I, I feel like so much of just even my own creative process is just experimentation and trial and error. I, you never yeah, just knock it out of the exactly. park. Never. <clears throat> oh, buddy. Well, I get maybe sometimes, but that's not really up to us at the end of the day. It's We present our work to the person that wants the our work and they either like it or they don't. Hopefully they are stoked on it. But if not, then you have room to improve and grow and figure out what, what you could do differently. That actually brings me to my next point, bud, is working with clients. You know, you mentioned deadlines. It, we're not just making art just for the sake of making art. One day, maybe, but we're usually dealing with a client. Now, 
tell me about like your process work with a client because like I can go on yarns for <laughs> when it comes to my work, but we've never talked yeah. about this before. Yeah. It's, it's different with every person I work with. Um, it is helpful when that person or that client knows, uh, in, in a sense what they want. Yeah. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't even know how to communicate what they want. Oof. And so that means my job is to help them be able to communicate that, <clears throat> which I have extensive experience in because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, that, that's just what happens. You know, I, I, there, there was times where I wrote probably four or five pieces of music to send off to a client just to figure out, can you communicate what you want with any of this music here? Wow. Dude, and so I mean, wrong. there's been times, <laughs> there's been times where I've done that and they go, you know, I don't really like any of this. We're going to go with someone else. And it's like, okay, that's, that's how, that's just how it goes. Sometimes. My goodness. Now how, because actually I got to ask you, how does that feel when, when, <laughs> I mean the rejection, <laughs> rejection is not super fun, No, but it's better than if you're pouring your heart out to something and it's like your own creative baby. And then someone goes, I don't like that. Mm, yeah. That That's harder than like, if you already talked to someone and you are in relationship with them, trying to figure out what they want, because ultimately if I'm working with a director, the director has a vision right? for producers. They have a vision of what they want. And if it doesn't work out, it's kind of like, kind of like if you're trying to date somebody and you know, you go on some dates and you realize, Hey, we actually don't like each other. You know, this is, this doesn't work, you know, we're not compatible, yeah, but there's, there's a respect there. Right. And you go, this is, this just isn't working. No hard it's feelings. Transparency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, because you mentioned, you know, if you were to, you know, create something just totally from your soul as a, you know, and then get that rejection that they don't want that work. It's very different than w trying to build within their parameters, their set guidelines. Hmm. Now, would you say you enjoy creating for yourself or do you enjoy dealing with some rules, you know, having parameters? I need rules. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I like them I, too. It's hard. Yeah. It, it, gets, it gives you parameters to work with. Like I'm, so I'm currently releasing an album of my own music, but I've been working on it for like a year and there's no way I'd be allowed to work on a film score for a year. <laughs> well, no, no one really for does those that deadlines you know what i mean yeah you almost i've had to give myself guts. deadlines for that you, it's kind of important uh mm -hmm. well because like for instance when some when a client comes to me for like a door or a chandelier or maybe just a sculpture or something like that there usually comes with parameters and that kind of helps it like hone the images down because if if i'm able to just yeah. do anything which that never exists you don't just get free reign that never happens <laughs> Not mm -hmm. yet, at least. But you, you're able to kind of hone that to an edge to where you actually kind of know where it's where you're kind of headed. Because if not, it's almost like peering into a bottomless pit. It's almost scary. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's another reason why I create those templates. Because if I create the templates, then I know that here's here's what I have to work with, and I'm, I need to try to stick to this because there's sounds in there that are, that are going to work. And because if I yeah, you can just go on and on and on. Exactly. So creatives can do, it can be endless at some point. It's too much. It's, it's like the amount of images you're getting, the sounds that you hear, like, oh, okay. Well, speaking of sounds that you hear, but Teddy, what inspires you? Oh, there's a lot that inspires me. Well, I listen, I listen to a lot of music. I'm inspired by other people's creativity. Um, I'm inspired by people's, excitement and enthusiasm on a project and then typically i'm inspired by a glass of wine or some whiskey when i'm when i'm writing 100 percent. it's it's sometimes it's that cup of coffee it's sometimes it's, it's just it, i noticed that it's that was very like kind of ritualistic the beginning or the end of the day you're no longer in workflow and you're receptive to all of the floating magic that's floating around right um it's just really cool to hear because I we've never we've not really talked much about it. We've talked about our own creations and things. Like for for myself, a lot of the times it could just be a walk. Sometimes it's a it's a plastic bag, you know, flying around in the parking lot. You know, so just shapes for me. It's shapes. 
you know, oh. Yeah, it can get extensive too. There's so many things that inspire us to do what we do. I'm sure you can be inspired by the way a bag floats in the sky. Exactly. <clears throat> like, I want to create that trail. Exactly. And I would look at it and go, I want to I want to write a soundtrack to what that bag is going through. See, now that's fascinating, my man. So when it comes to music, you know, um, music is so powerful. I don't think we understand just as casual watchers of movies and shows and, you know, even video games, just how powerful a score really is in setting the tone. Like there was that joke post that was circulating for a while where it was like Mrs. Doubtfire, but it was framed in the lens of a horror movie. Did you ever see that? Yeah. <laughs> it was genius. Utterly genius you know yeah completely can, different film just by just by the score you can transform robin williams genius comedy into absolute terror yeah it's powerful stuff and it goes so unnoticed not you know, i don't i don't think people understand just how important music is that's certainly true in some cases but that goes for any any part of the part of the film you know like, Camera operators, boom operators, gaffers, all that. Some of the stuff gets overlooked because they, they consume what's in front of them at that point. And then really- when they start when they start getting um, enthralled by certain things and you start to notice a little more, then you have a little more appreciation for it. You really bring up a good point. So <clears throat> when it comes to my like, um, like social media stuff, uh, I constantly get uh, comments from people that are – that are actually very creative, but they don't think of themselves as artists, as, you know, creating anything. And and that's so frustrating to me because I want this creative workshop to inspire others to really appreciate their own input, their own, you you know, the grip guy for the movie, he's got his hands in it. You know, the, the, I don't know, the person, you know, pushing the cart, she has her hands in it, you know, Mm-hmm. You know, being just a human being, you are innately creative. Yes, I do believe that. And and I'm I'm really excited to bring more creatives together to inspire that in people and to really show that yes, you know, as you're painting the uh, the signs on the sidewalk, that is su- great creativity. You are an artist. You know, you, you the way you lay out your spreadsheet, that's art. It might, and I might not be in a gallery, but I want people to appreciate. And you know, I I grant you li- your creative license to be eccentric in your art form. Like, go, just you're an artist, darn it. <laughs> yeah, everyone is. Everybody. You, you brought up something funny in my one of my classes at when I was going to Berkeley College of Music for um, for film scoring. We had this art appreciation class. Essentially, that's what it was. And we had to have a discussion on what we thought was artistic and what wasn't art. And, but the point was everything is art. Art is everywhere. Art imitates life. And I brought up something. I said, even the person who's creating like the stop sign, that's an artistic move right there. You have, they have to artistically create something, even if it looks stale and we drive past them every day it's still a form of art look at us man <clears throat> just parallel look at us look at us man <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fantastic now in your line of work let's let's get back to you i want to put the spotlight back on you we gave everyone else a moment there but <laughs> now in your field what are some of the challenges that you meet is it maybe just a difficult client is it you know a lot there's a lot <laughs> that can come into play. Um, I've had I've had difficult clients before. Um, I'm I'm learning to have better boundaries in my life, and that in my early days, like I, I did not have good boundaries. I would let people essentially walk on me when I was working on a film because I was, I was young and eager, and I was like, yes. I'll do anything to to make this work because I want this career and I want to be you know, given the opportunities and maybe this is how it is. I just have to do whatever they tell me. And, you know, I have, I have lost work with people because I said, look, I want to work on this, this film. It's a, it's a, I think it's a great film. And I said yes to it, even though your budget didn't match, you know, how much time it's going to take. 
but I believe in the project. And then, but now you're, you're wanting me to continually um, do revisions and you, it's not even that you don't like the music. You just want someone to experiment with. And then I would just do it. It's I just kept doing it. And <laughs> so much time is gone. And then it's like, okay, we need to be focused and figure out what you actually want and make some decisions. Yes. And it took me years to figure that out. Really long and, time. And I feel like this is a crux for so many people trying to uh, just create in general. You know, because it's yeah. so easy, especially when it's a passion, to be taken advantage of. It's happened to me countless times, but it's it's going to happen more times. Like we're we're not through this passage at all. <laughs> well, and sometimes, you know, like I like to think of like the code of commission, the the, the code of building and creating things as like a triangle, right? You know, in one corner you have like the people that you're working with. At the top, you might have. Um, your, your profit, right? Like you will, if we're doing this professionally, we got to put food on the table. We have to pay for our roof. Um, and then the other corner I like to think of is like the, the project at hand. How cool is this? How rewarding is this going to be for your career, your portfolio, all that stuff. And I like to always think of having two of those, if not all three, but if there's only one, you know, if there's only one corner of that triangle filled in, it's, you might just have to work away. Yeah. Yeah. I learned a very similar philosophy. Um, the emerging film composer is a book and this guy talks about, um, you know, what, at what points within this curriculum, you know, if things match up, like, is the money good? Are the people good to work with? Is the, is the product good? Right. Are you going to learn a lot from it? And um, is it like good networking? It was something like that. Mm -hmm. And he said, as long as there's three of them in there, then it should be, it should be good. Yeah. Even if the one of the ones that's not in there is just, there's no money. And then you choose to do it. You, As I reflect, at least on my career, um, it's been 20 years now, kind of crazy to think about, but it's, wild. it's, I look back and there's always different ratios. It was very, I mean, it's been all three once, like once or twice. Um, and some, it's just, it's, a, it's degrees, right? You take the good with the bad and that's important, you know, especially as a professional, because it's never going to be perfect. Now, the, the, the people listening probably also don't realize that you also play in a number of bands and you're an amazing gifted percussionist, rad drummer, right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I do play drums a lot. Ooh, I've danced to you a few times, but even that you had me out in the dance floor <laughs> grooving. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> but I am curious because usually when it comes to music composers, as a as a, a absolute lover of film scores, you know, neoclassical and classical classical, big fan of J, you know, J.S. Bach. But you're coming from things with the soul of a percussionist. There he is. It's Bach. <laughs> Everyone listening, he has a little bust of Bach, and it, it, that worked out perfectly, <laughs> didn't it? But nice. coming from the soul of a percussionist, what is it like to write music from there as opposed to being, you know, because you also play amazing piano. You play a plethora of, of instruments, obviously, but I feel like your heart is in the drums. What differs between your music coming from that side of things Versus someone that's coming in for like from guitar. That's a good question, man. I, when I first started writing music, it was, it was uh, linked to percussion in general, but it was not linked to like rhythmic, um, like drum beats and stuff. Cause I, I play drums, but when I first started getting fascinated with melodic music is when I was learning like the vibraphone and marimba xylophone in high school band. So we so had a concert like season. Bridging the gap between the two worlds. <clears throat> yeah. And then it got me into piano because, you know, same key structure. I learned the notes on the piano, learned how to read. So I was playing. And then there was something that like that struck an emotional chord with me, if you will. And that started this journey because I learned how to I learned how to communicate without my words how I was feeling. Yes. And that drew me to Film scoring, just in general, I, I loved film scores, but I wasn't nerdy about it. And 
I didn't really know much much about it. Really, I knew I liked certain music from certain movies. Sure. And no, so once amazing. once yeah, so once the the emotional side came through, then I thought, you know, I'm I'm seeing things now that I didn't really see before, and I'm learning different things. And then um, I thought maybe I could try this out because I I would have music playing in my head when I would just go on a walk or something or I'm hanging out with my friends there, I felt like I heard music full orchestra stuff going on in my head that I, I was like, I, I need to, I want to put this out there. Like you got to try it out and see, maybe this is part of my calling. I have no idea. And so that's when I started going down that path. That's fascinating. How old were you when you started playing piano? Probably like 15, I think. Oh. 15 yeah because i was 15 and or 14 15 high school band playing the the bells and marimba and stuff and then uh there was a piano in the band room so i'd go in there noodle around was never very good from what i thought but i tried and it was just kind of off and on i never was classically trained or even took lessons for a really long time on piano i would just sit down and play i almost feel like that's a benefit sometimes it's coming yeah, from so much more was. of a raw place. Yeah. You can hear in my music, it's a lot of it's very raw because I'm not in a classically trained place for the most part. I didn't, yeah, like I said, didn't take piano lessons. I had to take piano in college, of course, but it was just to supplement other things. It wasn't necessarily to be a good piano player and learn amazing technique. Yeah. It but was just, to just as a yourself. supplement. You, because you yeah. mentioned like, how do I, how, and especially 15, I don't remember, like, I don't know if all of you listening remember being a teenager. That is dark, angsty times, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what a time to be able to find your own self-expression. You and I, yet again, have a lot of parallels in that. Yeah. Because I was playing metal bands back then and it was really intense. I remember. And then I was playing pretty piano on the side. <laughs> But it's all under the same umbrella of expression. Yeah. It and is. I feel like it, those those ages, you know, from like 14 to maybe 20, let's say 14 to 19 are so tumultuous, you know, yeah. across the board. And what a you don't time. even know who, you're, who you are. Yeah. You're, you're trying to figure out exactly, just like you said, who you, who are you? What do you sound like? What do you have to say? And what a time to find your art form. God, that's so cool. All right. So I know that I know which one it is for me, but when it comes to creating music and expressing yourself from emotions, what emotion is the strongest for writing to? Sadness. (laughs) (laughs) If people cry listening to my music, it makes, it brings me joy. Really. I'm a, I'm a really big fan of a gentleman called Taliesin Jaffe. For all you nerds out there, you know who I'm talking about. But he once said, sad music is happy happy music for deep people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It changes your mood and everything. It brings back memories. There's yeah. something in that sad music that is just, it's, it could be beneficial. It could bring you to a different place. You know, I think, I think we can relate to whatever music we like, of course, but there are, I think, some universal things about that, like sad emotional music that really tugs on people's heartstrings sometimes. It's it's just so visceral. It's so evocative, hundred percent. Yeah. Most yeah. of the music I listen to is very sad. You know, it. I, and not that I'm sad. Usually, it's weird. People yeah. listen to sad. It's music, beautiful music. Like it's I don't know, <laughs> but I listen to it and I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you feel good. It does. And I don't, never understood. Yeah. Like um, if I'm listening to classical uh, music and I see it's in the key of major, pff, skip. <laughs> <laughs> I, everything's got to be in minor key. I don't know. It just tick, It just really tantalizes the heartstrings a little bit more. Yeah. It's very relatable to like some, a lot of the epic music out there too. Cause it, they, a lot of it lives in that minor key. Yeah. And there's just, there's something about the intervals that feel really deep and they can be pretty large intervals when they're moving chords and moving up and down the scale. hundred percent about it. Oh yeah. You're talking like arpeggios, you know, we're talking, f- you know, Oh, like the, the original, um, shredder, you know, Vivaldi 
Yeah. He's, oh, a, uh, he's a fast man. Yeah, yeah absolutely incredible. <laughs> and when also learning, I, it's always fun to learn, right? But uh, learning about his, uh, do you do you know about Vivaldi's uh, relationship with Stradivarius? I don't. Oh, get a load of this partner. So this is also why I love it when creatives unite, because it's so often that creative people you we we go solitary. We're like mushrooms. We we grow in the darkness alone. Yeah, and we don't get out and exchange ideas. And it's so detrimental to our art, at least mine. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit more of an extroverted mm-hmm. person. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so you had Stradivarius, which had like t- numerable, oh, like half a dozen generations consecutively of incredible violin makers. Mm-hmm. And then during that time, you had this absolutely gifted young Vivaldi and they, you know, the only reason Vivaldi was able to write music like he did, Shredder, right? <laughs> you know, the, the the original speed metal, yeah, was because yeah. Stradivarius was making violins that could handle that sheet music. That's incredible. And I didn't like know that history at all. Was then never the same because those two got together. And I mean, I guess you could say something similar between like. I don't know, uh, John Williams and, you know, uh, Spielberg, you know, they both accelerated their mediums so much and they changed the world. So I feel like it brings further into light just how creative community can be so inspiring. That was the Renaissance, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to get me really wild and inspiring <laughs> to keep this up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> Oh man! Well, and like let's, let's it's get it's back. good to talk and communicate. It is like with 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 our friends, people like minded people like this. Yes, keeps us inspired. And you just never know what might be stated, and that will just floor you for the next ten years of your work. There's been yeah. so many times someone will just mention some off comment, and that'll just so totally just send you down this rabbit hole. Yes, yes, it will. Gosh, it's so cool. And just the power of music. Um, now back back to your work as a you know, as a composer. The ability to convey emotions. How do you how do you how do you do that? So like when I'm work when I'm working on a film, which is it's an it's ideal when you actually do get the film. There's been times where I've had to write music for film and I don't have visual at all. And I think that's that's something I really need because I can write music um, without, you know, if I'm doing my own stuff, write music. And, but it's like just for me and I'm seeing my own things in my head and I'm having my own visuals and I go from there. But when I'm working on a film, I try to let the film speak and then I'll, I'll write, I'll experiment over it. Of course, within hopefully within the parameters that the director or producers give you. Because that's a good start. Sometimes they will send me music ideas. Uh, sometimes there's what's called temp music. So there's already music on the film. They don't want it in the film, but it kind of captures the mood they're going for. Do you sometimes, so that, is it ever hard to unhear that? <clears throat> those melodies? Yes. Yes. Sometimes it's been really good because uh, it, give, it gives you a good starting place. It, it's just more parameters for you to work in. And so some people really like it. Some people really don't. Um, it, 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 I guess it can vary for every project because sometimes you'll find you'll have a director who is kind of married to that temp music, and that makes the creative process really difficult because now you have to convince them that you can write something that is going to invoke the same emotion as that temp music, and oh, it, it can be really hard to do that. Yeah. Ooh, man. Yeah, trying to break a client from their preconceived notations that's sometimes yeah. really hard <clears throat> it's really hard i had one of my recent projects i worked on we ended up not doing the project together because of that reason um and there, were, there was no disrespect you know it's just they had the temp music that they liked but they didn't want to use the temp music and even even to a point where i had created something that was almost exactly the temp music and they're still like, yeah, it's just not working. <laughs> it, you, like, can't, right, you can't win. I don't know what to tell you. 
Right. Man, that's tough. That's got to be really tough. Now, so that contract was lost. Maybe it'll be picked up in their next project. But what's a project possible, yeah. for you that was like huge, like was groundbreaking for you? Um, there was a film that I worked on uh, some years ago. Not that long ago. Obviously, I'm not that old, but there was a film called The German King. It's a short film based on a true story. And it's a pretty sad story. It's a true historical piece. And um, I had I'm, I was working with this director because I had done his previous film. Um, he liked my music. And it was a project that I agreed to do for free. It was one, it was one of the first films I had worked on. And I liked the storyline, did it. And he's like, I want you for the next one. So we wor- did that film. Uh, and it was just, it was, it was different. You know, it, it was definitely more on the orchestral side. And because it was a period piece the, the he didn't want a lot of the modern elements you would hear in like a modern take on a score. Right. And so I got to work with a little more of like a, I wouldn't say bare bones, but you know, string quartet style. And then like, bigger orchestral stuff, big drums, a um, little bit of choir in there. But I remember it was one of the films where I, I was so excited about it. And we had, we had done like uh, meetings about it. Um, very good on communication with all of the stuff. And once I started working on it, I felt like I was, I've watched the film so many times and just kept experimenting over it. And it just, it felt so good to get lost in the world of that film. And that was like the first time that that had really happened to me. Really? Because I, you know, I was at this point friends with some of the people on the project, a little more comfortable working. Um, I had just gotten a new computer. So like my system was just re- beefed up and ready to go. And I just had my space, you know, I dedicated time for it. And I knew that, you know, once I get off work, I'm going to, you know, go home and like, spend an hour to myself and then I'm working on this thing until like two in the morning. Then I'll wake up, go to work again and then come home and do it again, you know, but I was having such a good time just experimenting in this world. And I mean, it was, I feel like it was experimental for the director as well because, you know, he would hear something and he'd be like, Hey, this is really beautiful. Can we try something else here? Yeah. I'm kind of hearing something else. I'd like to hear what this sounds like. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And but that happened a few times and I had to learn to not get married to my own music because I thought it was good. At the end of the day, if the director wants something different, you, you kind of have to keep going and um, essentially make them happy. I, I'm not the best at arguing for my own music over something. I think only a, maybe one or two little spots. I was like, I really feel like this is hitting. Can you listen to it again? Right, <laughs> can we right. see if we can make this work? So from what I'm getting, like, so the, the communication was good. The equipment was there. The passion was, was on fire. Oh, that's amazing. Like all of the elements were there. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And to this day, it's still some of my favorite music that I've written just because it, because of the time, because of how I feel about it. But I also felt like my chops had leveled up to a point and my chops grew during that film too. I mean, I think I, I, think I worked on it for about a month. Wow. To do that much work, groundbreaking work in the amount of a month is, that's ridiculously cool. Yeah. It, it would have been cool to have a longer time, but you know, some, that's just not how films work. Right. <laughs> well, I can think back to my, to my own catalog of work and yeah, there's a couple that stand out as like total, just like milestones, benchmarks, you know, like, and it's really important to recognize those, you yeah. know? I think that's that's why I I, I think I, I put a lot of my draftings on my wall so I could remember where I was at certain times. Yeah, there's so many motifs that I don't want to leave behind that I, maybe I didn't even use. Yeah, that's maybe in your when you have some free creative time, you can create something that you loved a while ago. I know you still want to create that instrument you've talked to me oh, about, buddy. Don't get me going <laughs> on that. Well, how cool would it be to have like a Teddy Ramirez uh, instrument that you get to have in all your compositions? You know, someday that's it is going to happen. I've always dreamed when I have the proper funding for things. And you know, I would love to have my own custom instruments. I've made a couple of my own, 
but something awesome like you you can't leave me hanging on yeah. that what what kind of issues <laughs> were you building buddy uh I, I created one of them it was um it was more for like a horror sound check so it was a a wooden box it was actually mccallan 25 year uh wooden box that it sits in i got it from one of our buddies and then i i drilled holes in it i put um huge pieces of uh what do you call it when you bend the metal in a curve? I'm sure there's a word for it. Like, like, like rolling it? Um... Yeah, two pieces. It was two pieces of like, roll, it was rolled brass and rolled steel. Oh. So they're like, they look like waves. And I have a, a couple springs on there and then a really long pole. Um, just, and then I hook up a, uh, in, a mic to it. Uh, it's like a clip on mic. Got so it. it captures all the reverberation from the wooden box whenever you hit, hit the things and. The, the the springs created their own reverb. Um, the different metals sound different. You hit them with drumsticks, or you flick them, or even if you just touch them, and they they have that low end frequency rolling through. Yeah, and then uh, then I put a handle on it so I can hold it and do all that stuff too. And I got to, I got to use it for some for some work, and it was pretty fun. You actually got to use it. Yeah. Oh, that's I still have awesome. it. It's around somewhere here. Well, and just sound is so wild. You know, it could be so beautiful and harmonic and then also be so deeply unsettling, like those, the deep rumble of the springs and stuff. That's cool. I'm actually currently working on a sign right now um, where there's a, there's a large, almost looks like a, a, a paella dish. It's three foot diameter and it's just, it's just a big old, disc and has a like a border like a wall around it like a two inch steel band if you will and it's a gong and i was just i was i welded it all up it was tight as a drum and then i was like i was lifting it and setting it aside and it i set it down it did this crazy sound nice and it's like oh my gosh i want to put like a i just need to buy a like a violin bow so i can you know get the get the vibration going on it so i can really oh yeah just have some fun i love sound so cool yeah that stuff's so fun to do too but as as artists and as you artists that are listening i almost feel like we we have like little mental bookmarks you know like we might have an experiment and you i feel like we could very easily say that was a failed experiment because nothing came from it which i want to pop that balloon right now because that I'm oh, a yeah. firm believer that there's no such thing as wasted time. Mm-hmm. You know, because one experiment might trigger something 10 years down the road. Like, Ooh, I remember when I did that, that didn't work, but now I've, you know, cultivated this whole knowledge base. So now I can try this. I, um, I so constantly, you know, yet again, comments that I receive, you know, the half of the reason why I do this, you know, today is people are not wanting to waste time and like, oh, you know, I want, I want to major in this, but also I want to, you know, focus on my art. Guys, there is no such thing as wasting your time. It all goes into that beautiful collection of memories and experiences that you, you extrapolate from when you're being creative. You know, because I mean, I, I grew up drawing. I never would have thought that would have got me into, like, the into my into the world of my welding and things like that. And then I was able to merge those two, and here we are. I think the coolest thing is being able to uh, merge as many passions and talents that you actually have. Actually, Teddy, what are some of the like you're you're just? And I also I'm not a super firm believer in natural born talent. I feel like. <laughs> Uh, skill comes from a lot of hard work. There's definitely, you know, mm-hmm. you definitely can lean into things a little easier, of course. But what yeah. are some of those just, you know, very natural proclivities that helped you get to where you're at? Oh, um, I, I feel like I always had a knack for music. Mm. Even before I had a drum set, I was making drums out of. Folgers coffee cans and Pringles cans and and um, it's it was weird. You it was so kid, fun though. Was, with all the pots and pans and the kitchen floor banging around. Yeah, and <laughs> and pens. I was using pens to do it. And when I so when I when I actually first got a drum set, I knew how to play a drum beat. It was super weird. I 
something something was clicking and even though i i know i didn't sound very good in the early years i i I just loved it so much i would just sit down and play a lot and it branched into like when i i went to college for for drumming and at that point you know we're practicing we're practicing almost 40 hours a week on top of classes and so you you excel really quick when you start putting in that kind of time to something that you are already passionate You're about. You're just living and breathing your art form. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, and you you did mention like uh <clears throat> in your early years, you didn't you didn't sound great, right? You're not supposed yeah. to. You're learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're building that skill. Yeah. And exactly. for anybody that's listening, you know, when it when it comes to your first pieces of art, it shouldn't be beautiful that piece of wood that you've whittled into a spoon that you know that uh the the leather um you know like pocket little extra pocket you know for your belt it shouldn't be perfect you're you're learning you're building a skill set you got to start from somewhere darn it yeah and you, there's even beauty in the crudeness sometimes yes. well you need that you need that launch pad you know wherever yeah. it is and you know i think the biggest thing is to not tear yourself down. It's so easy to do so. And a lot of people around you will automatically do it for you. So yeah, the best thing you could do is be gentle with yourself. <laughs> yeah, you have to be. Oh, yeah. And you have to be consistent. Just keep, keep doing it. Even if you're not motivated, you know, and then like, like, you know, you get to a place where it's like you and I, maybe we're not motivated, but the deadline doesn't care if you're not motivated. Oh man, <laughs> you gotta go. I swear it ticks even faster when you're not motivated. <laughs> it does. <clears throat> okay, so as you know, I have a lovely Patreon community, and I think you'd benefit from it one day too if you ever uh, wanted to do something like that for yourself. Um, you're, you're you got so much to share, man, and I'm also very grateful to have you on and have a conversation with you. But happy to be here. I reached out to my community the other day. Okay. And I asked them to ask you questions on my behalf. Ooh, all right. So buckle up. There's some weird ones. No, I'm teasing you. They're great. Um, but Yvonne, I'll take them all. Yeah. Yvonne says, uh, what do you aim to achieve with your creations? Is there a general idea behind what you make? Excellent question. That's a great question. I would say yes in the in the uh, realm of film scoring and working with other people when it's just me not so much i don't always have a plan or an idea um i might have a general idea but it doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen so if i sit down and i'm just creating it's it wild west out there until something forms now that's fascinating because we were talking about parameters right? Mm -hmm. uh, working for a client versus working just, just through the sheer bubbling creativity coming from within, from its primordial soup, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's almost like, and I, I totally agree. I'm very similar. I like nebulous. I, I want totally abstract free flow, you know, versus like hard, <laughs> very, um, I don't know, very, uh, oh God, very, What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Disciplined lines and things like that. Um, but it's almost like we don't give ourselves the parameters like a client would require. Right. We don't. I wonder we if give we ourselves did. a little more freedom. What if we did? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there is a sense where we do. Like maybe you might wake up one day and you're like, yeah, I want to create a knife today. Mm. And that's all. You know, you know, you're not telling yourself how big the knife has to be, what the handle has to look like, what kind of metal you want to use, right? How thick you want it to be. You can have all those things to kind of shape themselves, but you just know you want to create a knife. Yeah, there's less pressure. You can almost just get yourself into a flow state. Hmm. Great, uh, Yvonne. Thank you so much. <laughs> and then this next question. Yeah. Comes thanks, Yvonne. From Catherine, also a lovely soul. What brings you the most joy? Out of all the things that you have created and composed. That's a tough one. Cause I feel like a few things come to mind and I'm just going to say them. That's what you get. That's what I, got, for, man. I got the opportunity to write the score to my, to my sister's wedding video. Oh. And I, I wanted to do it as a gift and she was into it. 
And that brought me a lot of joy because, you know, she loved it. Her husband loved it. And um, it was it, it was cool that I was in a place with my career and my skill set that I was actually able to create something that I was really proud of for that moment. And then fast forward a few years, I did the same thing, but it was for my mother's memorial service. I wrote her a song in response to her death. And it was played uh, during her montage video at the, the memorial service. And so joy and happiness, but in a different, totally different realm. I totally, totally understand what you're saying. It's very similar to listening to sad music. It's, it, it's, it's a full yeah. feeling. It's very enriching. And also yeah. like being able to share our, our gifts with loved ones. There's sometimes nothing more enriching than yeah. that. And I'm, I'm sure there was not a dry eye in the house for what you created because I, I know how talented you are, buddy. <laughs> and I bet you made that both ceremonies absolutely beautiful. I would have been a, in an absolute mess if I were there, bud. Yeah, that was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> As you should be. Got huh? everyone. Oh my goodness. Well, Daddy, thank you for sharing that. that that's, that's heavy duty. Appreciate you. Of course. Thank you, Catherine, for the question. Oh, Catherine. She, uh, she's a school teacher. We have tea every Sunday morning together. Just terrific people. Now the next question comes from James. What's your favorite piece of musical equipment or software? More techie this time. I have it here actually. And it's a very um, interesting, simple piece here. I'll have to show you, then I can tell you what it is. But it is just a simple fader box. What am I looking at? And they're all, yeah, it's just, and it's all mapped out to different uh, MIDI CCs. So I don't, I don't use them all, but you can program, you can program these things to do certain, uh, to perform certain duties in the the program. So I use Logic Pro. And so here's, I'll keep going. That's so cool. It's called Fader Control, I think. And it was a custom made instrument for my friend, Julian Cisneros, who's also an amazing film composer. And so he had this, he had this made and then he sold it to me. You're saying he didn't want to use it anymore. It was custom made. Yeah. (laughs) That's incredible. And so, so he sold it to me and because, um, so what you can do, so there's virtual string libraries, right? And, um, some of them are very detailed, like the, the Spitfire audio solo strings. They have like the professional version of solo strings and just, they sound great. There's every single note, um, even little nuances that like a violin player would make is recorded and detailed into that instrument. And this allows you to uh, move in, in and out of those parameters. So you have one, this one controls how hard the bow is actually sweeping across the string. Oh, this is complex. Yeah. And it's, it's very wild. There's so many different parameters. And the, the one in the middle here I use this controls, this is no vibrato, this is heavy vibrato. And so you can control the amount of powerful vibrato you get from that instrument. And then this one is just like a secondary volume. So while you're doing this, so like let's say you want it to be a really, really soft bow, yeah, but you want it to be heard, so you put the volume up and then you slowly move up a little bit of the, the vibrato and it's just a beautiful intimate sounding uh, solo string. (laughs) This is wonderful because I have often been so wildly confused on how the heck you've created the music you've done. That, that illustrates it a lot. And you actually explained that very well. Thank you. Thanks. That's the first time I've tried to explain it. (laughs) (laughs) I just use it. Uh, And you could, you could do the other stuff, but I have some virtual synthesizers and you can, um, faders as knobs and whatnot. How cool. That's incredible. Yeah. So that's got it's one of my favorite things because I use it all the time. It's it's a huge help into uh, creating the music that I want to create because the last thing I want to do is try to play it on the keys and then go in and draw in all those different parameters. I can do like a performance level at first and try to capture the emotion as I'm playing it, and so that's really it's really helpful. Oh, that, I could only imagine. That's really neat. And one just really evoked that realistic sound. 
Yeah. How cool is that, man? Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. So Jenna, she asks, what emotion or response do you hope to evoke from your listeners? I, I guess I wouldn't say I always want them to feel what I'm feeling, but I hope that because my music is emotional, that it helps them feel something that they needed to feel. Oh, I love that. That's great. Very utilitarian in nature. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And I agree. Like when it comes to my, my, my art, I, I want, I want people to have their own experience, but I do hope that they, they have a collective experience of maybe like, what time am I in? You know, <laughs> like, why am I looking at this giant metal thing that shouldn't be moving, but it is moving? What, what's happening here? Yeah. I want the listeners today to know where they can find your music and find you on the social medias, any, anywhere you want to send people. Where can they find you, Teddy? Yeah. You can look up Theodore Ramirez on any streaming platform. And it has a lot of personal music. And then there's a couple of soundtracks. The film I referenced earlier, The German King, that soundtrack's on there. My new album is coming out. I'm releasing singles currently, so you can keep up with that. And then same name, TheodoreRamirez.com has interviews, videos, uh, music examples, if you want to check that out. And then on Instagram, it is I am Teddy Ramirez. Teddy, I got to thank you for your your transparency, you sharing your story with us, you know, and just being a downright great guy. <laughs> Thanks, man. Honored to be All on right. your, uh, your guest list today. Thank you for having me. You're the first one, baby. <laughs> Love it. Awesome, man. Well, everybody, thank you for watching. And I hope this was maybe inspiring on your journey to allow yourself to be a little bit more creative. And until then, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.